Hey guys, this is uh, web-based lecture number seven. We are talking about yoga for stress management. So, really quick review. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what is stress. Um, we've mentioned that several times over the course of the term so far. Um, we're going to come up with a good solid definition for it. Um, and then I'm going to talk about two different techniques that you can use um, yoga, particularly those higher order thinking limbs, um, in terms of stress management and stress relief. Um, one is called biofeedback, the other is called proprioception. And then you've got your homework assignment. So just for review, limb four, pranayama, is breath control. Limb five is pratyahara, selective attention. Limb six is dharana, focus. Um, Again, we've sort of focused on some of the higher order thinking limbs from an, an abstract standpoint. Um, today, hopefully, we're going to talk about something really practical. Um, let's be honest, in Western society, one of the most often cited reasons for practicing physical yoga, asana and pranayama, is stress management and stress relief. So hopefully some of the things that we're talking about today will be... Um, solid for you guys and we'll give you guys a couple of ideas on how you can use some of these principles um, for stress relief in your own life. And to that end, what exactly is stress? Stress is any change that you must adapt to. Stress can be physical. Can your body physically do something that you're asking it to do? Um, we talk about in psychology a lot the fight or flight response. Um, the idea that your body gets revved with adrenaline and you have to make the decision to either fight or to run away. Um, this can be in terms of something, again, that you're asking your body to do physically. Are you strong enough to do it? Are you able enough to do it? Are you flexible enough to do it? All of those kind of things. Um, some of you guys have been fighting some of those issues in terms of the asana that we do in class um, and working through some of those things this semester. Stress can be mental. Can your mind do something? Um, can your mind take a test? That's a really common one that you guys face a lot as students. Um, can you focus your attention? We have done that a lot, especially in terms of your online things and the, the homeworks that you guys have done in this class. Are you able to focus? Stress can be emotional. Can you manage your feelings? Um, that can have tons of different implications. That can mean, you know, big time life decisions. Are you moving? Um, you know, for a lot of you guys, especially if you're freshmen sitting in here, you guys are just starting college. That's a huge life decision and it's got implications that are really far reaching. And, you know, being able to manage the emotional issues that come with possibly being away from home for the first time or living with a roommate for the first time. Um, you know, managing reactions to other people. Um, I think it's sort of common misknowledge that other people do things to intentionally hurt us. Um, but I think in reality, we're all really just trying to manage the best that we can. And sometimes other people's actions or words do hurt us, but I don't think it's intentional a lot of times. However, our reactions to it tend to make us think that it was. Um, so again, are we able to sort of manage that and sort of step back and say, I need to take a breath and calm down? Stress can also be categorized as either positive or negative. Positive stress we call eustress. Um, so again, this is, if you guys have had that Psych 101, um, Psych 100, this is hopefully sounding familiar to you. Um, positive stress are things that bring a positive change or adaptation to the, to the self. Um, so things like graduating from college, getting married, those are all things that are we classify as stress. You have to adapt to those. Um, but those are good things. You know, when you have that college degree and now you can get a job that's going to allow you to live, that's, a, that's an awesome thing. And then there's negative stress. Negative stress we call distress. Um, these are things that bring a negative change or adaptation to the self. Um... So things that would be, con you know, easily classified as distress would be, you know, death of a loved one or um, an accident, something, you know, awful happens to you. What's really important for you guys to understand here, our perceptions largely dictate 
what response we're going to have. Meaning that the way we perceive something dictates whether it's eustress or distress. Um, so for example, graduating college could actually be seen as distress if the way you choose to look at it is that you are maybe leaving friends that you've had for four years, or maybe, maybe you don't have a job right out of graduating from college, and that can be seen as distress. Um, you know, on the, the flip side, you know, you have this idea that um, an accident or something that happens to you that's uncontrolled. Um, I have an example on the slide, cancer patients. Um, most of us would see cancer as distress. But there are individuals who have a very positive attitude that go into their treatment and they have that idea that my body is strong, my body can get through this. And they're more likely to have a positive outcome with their treatment. So we would classify that as eustress because the ultimate outcome, the lasting outcome, was positive. Okay, So it's really important to understand that with stress, your perceptions matter and they make a huge huge difference. So a couple of techniques that I'm going to talk about um, that will tie back to those limbs of yoga and how we can use those things to hopefully manage stress. Biofeedback. Biofeedback is any information that we can receive almost immediately from our own bodies that indicates some sort of status. Usually we talk about it in terms of health. So the two really common examples that I have on the slide are your a thermometer, which takes your temperature. You know, that can immediately tell you, is your temperature normal? Do you have a fever? Fever could indicate that you have the flu, a little bit of distress, right? Um, or the bathroom scale, body weight, okay? Body weight can indicate um, trends. Are you going up? Are you holding steady? Are you going down? Um, it can indicate patterns. Um, my ladies in the class, if you step on the scale regularly, you probably notice that there is a pattern that your weight cycles through that will correspond to your monthly cycle. Whether we like it or not, that is our gift from above for being female. Um, but the bathroom scale can tell you things like that. And depending on what it tells you, that can cause either distress or eustress. Okay, but those are biofeedback. Um, again, things that our body is telling us. Which brings me to my larger point about biofeedback. Why do I keep asking you guys to observe your breath? You guys have done, I think, four homeworks now that have involved some sort of observing of your breath or counting of your breath. We can use pranayama, and we have used pranayama in some of those, to change the pattern. Okay, Observing our breath is a form of biofeedback. Observing our breath and, and thinking about are the inhale and exhale lengths equal? Is it choppy? Is it shallow? All of those things that I've talked about all term, that is a form of biofeedback and it's critically important. Changes in the pattern of your breath can help relieve stress. Hopefully you guys have noticed that when you've done your own work, that as you've done the things like the breath counting activities or the victorious breath that we did a couple of homeworks ago, that you're noticing, hey, I feel better now, okay? That there's somehow a release in the tension and in the stress, okay? Um, particularly by extending our exhales, we can allow our body to release both mental and physical tension. Um, I talked at the very beginning when we did um, limb four initially, I talked about how the exhale is important because it allows us to release carbon dioxide, which is a waste product that our body makes. That's a re one type of a release of physical tension. Um, but by extending that exhale, we can also help release mental tension or spiritual tension or emotional tension. And that's really important. Proprioception is a second method um, where we can tap into those eight limbs and kind of mold yoga with science to hopefully accomplish stress relief. So proprioception is information that we receive regarding sensations in our muscles and joints. Okay. Um, I can describe this to you guys in a couple of different ways. Um, that tightness that you get during the initial stage of stretching. 
Okay, um, so the top picture on this slide is of a dancer um, in an extreme seated forward fold. Okay, every single one of you guys, I'm hoping, had the same reaction, which was ouch when you saw that picture. Okay, so that tightness that you would feel if you were attempt to that to do that stretch that you would get in your hamstrings, that's proprioception. That is again your body giving you that feedback, but in the form of a sensation, not a hard number. Biofeedback is going to give you a hard number or something. Um, that you can sort of focus on. Proprioception is something that's more of a sensation. Um, balance, um, or our ability to sort of sense our body position in space. Okay, you guys do this every time we do a new asana in class. Okay, you guys have to figure out how is my body balanced in this pose? Okay, am I oriented in a way that is weird to me? and fight through that. That's sensation that you're getting from your body, information that your body is giving you um, that you can work with. So just like we would do in biofeedback, by using that information that's coming from our body, we can choose what we're focusing on, okay? So in biofeedback, we're using the information and we're actively trying to change it, particularly when we talk about breath. Here, we're choosing what to focus on. Okay, so we're getting into that limb five, pratyahara, the sensory withdrawal, or even limb six, focus. Okay, so using the info from our bodies in asana, we've got a picture of a woman in um, dancer's pose here. To complete this pose effectively, where do you want to focus? Do you want to focus on the tightness that's in the quadricep of the leg that she's pulling up? Or do you want to focus on the balance and the stability that she's creating on the leg where she's standing, okay? Um, so again, selectively attending to something and then focus on relaxing tightness if it exists or creating that sense of stability if we can, okay? That's how we can really use proprioception to help with stress management. So, homework number seven. You guys get to practice these. Um, there's a biofeedback component and there's a proprioception component. So for biofeedback, find your quiet, comfy spot. Okay, bring your attention to your breath. Are you guys getting sick of me saying that yet? Um, note any issues. Set a timer for three minutes. Okay, start it when you're ready. We're going to do a variation of the victorious breath from last week. Count one, two, three, four on inhale. On your exhale, I want you to count all the way up to eight. If your attention wanders, just like we've been doing, refocus and restart your counts. Okay? Write and submit a short paragraph about your experience. Again, whenever we do breath work, note all of the common things that I ask you to about your breath and then explain to me how you felt afterwards. Hopefully extending that breath, that exhale, hopefully you feel more relaxed at the end of it. If, if you don't feel more relaxed, hopefully you at least feel positive. And then your proprioception exercise. Stick around in your quiet spot. Bring yourself to triangle pose, okay? Hold it for a few breaths and then bring your focus to the thigh of your outside leg, okay? So in other words, if you're Triangle pose, if you're bent laterally over to your right, you're going to bring your attention to the outside of your left thigh. Okay? I want you to focus there rather than any tension that you're feeling on the inner part of that thigh. While focusing on the outside leg, I want you to imagine that there's warmth. Okay? So every time that you're breathing in, imagine that there's warmth flowing into that spot on your leg. Hold asana for at least eight breath cycles, okay? And then I want you to write and submit a paragraph about how you feel. Were you able to achieve a little bit of a deeper stretch or a deeper pose? Do you feel better, worse, the same, okay? Um, those are lectures for this last week. Um, we've got a handful of other online lectures to go, so I will see you per usual next time.